Hey guys, welcome back to another mini machine shop. I'm Dave. Um, just going to share a few things today. I think I've covered in all my past videos a lot of different things. How to machine, mill, climb mill, conventional mill, a lot of different stuff. Showed making different things. Uh, put some stuff up on the website, some plans for people. So if there's anything specific that somebody wants me to do, um, leave it in the comments and I'll do it for the next video. So for this video, uh, it's, it's a lot of sharing things that I've just found, uh, a couple of things that I've built here. So let me bring the camera over to the uh, bench here and show you what I'm doing. Alright, here we are at the bench. What is the first thing? Uh, first thing is just telling you, everybody's seen the ER32 collets and check hole collet holders that I've had. Um, I was thinking, you know, when you're on the tailstock on the lathe, there's uh, limitations when you have to go to a half inch or, you know, some of the bigger bits. Because you can only stick the bit in the chuck so far. And um, then you just don't have the clearance, you know, for the part, to drill the part out. So I was thinking, hey, hey, it's an MT2. Is there an MT2 ER32 chuck out there, call it chuck? And sure enough, Amazon had one, and I ordered it, $22. So soon I will have uh, the ER32 capability in the tail sock, so I can sink drill bits way back in there and get the clearance on it. All right, number two, soft jaws, like way in the early days, I didn't have uh, parallels, so I decided to make them out of uh, plastic. And you caliper this stuff, I think I've said this before in other videos, that these things are flat. I don't know how they make this plastic, but it, I mean, it's, you don't even see a needle move when you put this on a granite block. And machining it, I was making it like parallels, and I also used these guys as soft jaws. What's the dimensions on this guy. So what have I got here? 4415, 4415, 442, 4415. So you can put them in the mill and turn them off or you know, fly cut them. I think I, I don't know if they fly cut this. I can't tell the patterns. Yeah, this was fly cut. So you can make your own parallels if you want. I made an assortment of them, different heights and things. And um, I also have the set, the taller set, which I can put in the vise, and then I put whatever I want in between it. And I've got a set of soft jaws that works. But I was also thinking, you know, I've got all this plastic acrylic here, and the vise for the mill. You run this again on the granite surface, and it's just. <laughs> It's flat. It's it's absolutely perfect. So I started making a set, and this was the first one, and I blew it because of the edge finder. I forgot to, I must have found this edge, and I forgot to go in the extra tenth. But I love machining this stuff. So if you guys get um, some plastic from someplace, the acrylic, it, it's really beautiful, and I've... Um, I indicated this on the granite block with the ultra sensitive test indicator and it's it's perfect so uh, tells me my tram is really good on the middle but you can make your own jaws and so I'll probably I hate sawing this stuff on the table saw because you wind up completely covered with all of the dust or whatever the cuttings but the other thing is my main bench vise <laughs> I went and looked on uh, eBay and sure enough there's this company for ten dollars and four dollars shipping it's got magnets in it and this is three and a half inch and it fits my bench vise perfectly I could also use this I guess in the mill but it's a hard rubber you can't really yeah you can dent it with your fingernail it's pretty hard but I've already used it a bunch of times I've had some things that I had to clamp in there and hacksaw off and it didn't want to leave marks on it Boy, you can really put dents in this stuff. You know, you crank a little bit on the vise and you can see the rubber giving. 
you can kind of feel things move, so uh, I don't think I would use this in the uh, mill. I have a feeling something's going to grab and fly out. So I would recommend you know, the hard plastic because you can really clamp down on it. Well, I have, yeah, with those other parallels that I showed you. I've clamped down hard on stuff and it doesn't move. The only bummer when I ordered it, their picture doesn't show any writing on it. It's just plain. And you get it and it's like, hey, cool. Yeah, you know, it's got nice shop box on it. But as big as this is, they put chain up over here. So nothing that a little paint remover can't fix. <laughs> they pull that china giant so there's a kind of nice 10 bucks eBay you can, you can find the guy he does um, it's a three and a half he does four four and a half five five and a half it doesn't go any smaller than three and a half that I found so that's it on soft jaws and what else here uh, did a new dial indicator holder I've always been looking for a height gauge don't know why but I had a chunk of aluminum sitting around, and I didn't have to really do much, just clean this, the two ends off. Stainless steel rod. Um, so I go, okay, you know, I didn't really know what I was going to do or make it for, but boy, it sure unfolded. You know, it's just a set screw back here, hole drilled completely through. The only thing I wish I did was I just drilled the hole thinking, you know, I can't get this in the mill to check the hole diameter and it's like stupid this is why you have gauge pins <laughs> you could have matched it and I wish I would have used the boring head and made that hole fit this rod absolutely perfect but I started making out of steel um, because the existent uh, all this junk that I don't use or get it out in the camera view this rod is really an oddball rod. It's not metric. It's not SAE. It's not you. It's not anything. I don't know where they came up with this size, but these guys will not clamp on this. It just it doesn't go down tight enough. You know, it's just it's close, but you really got to crank clamp down on it tight. So I started making my own one, and fits nice and snug. And I'm gonna using the slitting saw and. I think I showed that in a past video, there were like $6 high-speed steel china slitting saws. Well, it didn't make it. <laughs> it went in just a little bit until the teeth were just gone. So I ordered another one for 6 bucks, and I'm going to use it only on aluminum. But then I was realizing, it's like, hey, wait a minute. Um, use this part here. So all of a sudden, I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> Come on, get in there. Open it up. These things are the most awkward tools to use. You got that, then you got this. Turn it around. So that cl clamps down beautifully, nice and tight. And then you can use this. And then I've got the other guy for the dial indicator. Wrong hole, right hole. Open it up. And this thing is like, whoa. <laughs> absolutely perfect and I was lucky on the base because I put this on the granite block and the ultra sensitive test indicator on something and you push all the corners you push anywhere and it doesn't move at all so I was lucky I got it incredibly flat fly cutting it and now I've got this really nice Jesus it's super stiff it's perfect for doing testing of stuff and what did I do? Oh, to measure heights, I put the big, the big dial indicator, the two inch that I showed you in there, and you just have it off the granite some distance, you didn't care. And I look at the reading, and then I put the precision surface underneath it, and I measured the reading, and you do the difference between the height of this and the height that it says, and you know exactly how high that dial indicator is off the granite block. And I go and grab a gauge pen, that's a thousandth more than that, and I rolled it under there, and sure enough, it needle moved one thousandth. So this thing is beautiful um, for measuring stuff. I mean, I'm going to give this thing up. I forget that. <laughs> I don't need that. But I can go any height, uh, any dial indicator, test indicator. This worked out great. I am thrilled to death with this thing. So, new tool for the shop. 
uh, on test indicators too. I never had anything to really hold a dial indicator in the middle, so I quickly made this guy. Goes up in a chuck or whatever you've got. Dial indicator goes in here and it's straight down, so now I can rotate and check tram from time to time. Real easy. A simple little no-brainer project, just kind of clean. Uh, yeah, that face came out good. All right, so there's that guy, and this guy. Everybody saw the saddle stop. We finally got tired of it rotating all freely. So, and also the top falling down. So I put a spring in there, press the pin in there, and now it's beautiful. You just drop it in, turn it, lock it, done. This is the best saddle stop. I retired all the other ones there in the scrap drawer. Something else would be made out of them. Which way is it supposed to be? It goes in that way, so it's just supposed to be that way. So it drops in there and then tightens. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, what else have I got? Okay, soft jaws, new dial indicator. Um, on the mill, that side lever. I know somebody said, man, my noise makes all. My mill makes a lot of noise. And there was a squeal in it, and I finally got tired of this squeal randomly coming and going. And so I took the thing apart as far as I could and put grease in the bearings in the spindle, and the noise went away. So the noise was coming from that. But the high low on the left side of the mill, you can move it to a position where it's not engaged, either high speed or low speed, noise is all gone. It's really quiet. Can I fire it up here so you guys can hear it? Oh, I got the stop in there. It's great. That's it now. It used to make a ton of noise. Beautiful. Oh, my ears are loving it. So, I hope the lever doesn't move while it's running and try to engage high or low because I have a feeling havoc's going to happen because they say you can't do that with the mini mill, a mini lathe change and people have wiped out their gears and I don't care if the gears wipe out. I can't really get it apart completely to get that whole gear out of there. I would love to, but I think the spindle is pressed into the bearings and the bearings are pressed into the housing so I couldn't get it out. I didn't want to damage anything. Um, oh yeah, on this guy too. No sooner than I made it, I used it. Um, oh yeah, I'll explain what I used it for. That's great. Um, talking about flat, I've seen ClickSpring make a whole bunch of these little sanding things. And everybody's seen, I just kind of hold the sandpaper on there. Um, and lay, finish stuff off, clean it up after cutting it, turning it. So I made this and I tested it and it works a lot better than doing your hand. So I want to make a whole set of these things and I've got enough of plastic to do it. This is kind of wide, 320 grit. You can see right through the plastic is what it is, but I'll probably label them anyway. But I want to figure out how to make a nice complete set here for the shop or whenever I have to do it. So that's the uh, sanding stuff. Oh, yeah, tight to me. Where'd it go? Last video I said, you know, I machined all kinds of stuff, and if I can do tool steel, W1 water hardened, let me see if I can do titanium. Kind of embarrassing, I thought I ordered a quarter rod, but I guess it's like an eighth here. But no, cannot machine that. All I can do is like just kind of touch it and shine it up a little bit. It will not dig in, no matter what, with cutting oil, without cutting oil. So here's a few dollars worth of titanium that it is lighter though. Titanium is incredibly light. But no, I cannot machine it. It's kind of a bummer. I was hoping I could. What else do I want to do? Okay, I guess I want to share some. Oh, yeah, I had showed this. Here's finally the test. I want to see if you can scrape it. Does it scratch off? This is pretty nasty sharp. No, it does not. Wow. That is a nasty. I was expecting it to come off. No, you can't. So if you guys want to, like, cover something so it doesn't rust or whatever, use Dicam on it. It's indestructible. 
I wish I could do a thin coat, even coating of it, because there's like really dark here and light here and dark and light. Jeez, and that's, I, I don't know what this stuff is, but this is better than paint. So there was the test that I was waiting for, for the drawer, for that over there. All right, so I guess last but not least, I want to share some pictures. So let me put them up. This is from T. Hildy. I guess he liked the last video where I showed uh, this guy's shop and I need it. Was looking at this shop though, holy cow, this guy is definitely busy. <laughs> and I'm looking at a lot of stuff in this picture. If you look at the end mill, look at the bit, the end mill that's actually in there. It's like holy cow, and he does some serious cutting. Also, bottom right, I see that it looks like the Amazon tube that you order all the rod in. Maybe, maybe not. It has to be a rod to have a tube like that in the bottom right. Um, what else was there? Oh, yeah. Very top of the picture, you can see this white rack with the uh, indicator holder and a drill or something. It looks like more like an impact wrench. How did you get up there to get it, Todd? <laughs> it's like everything's in your way. You must be like an eight-foot guy to get all that stuff. And I'm also looking at the, the lathe in the front ground. It's like nice, serious lathe. Wish I had something that big. But it looks like he's got two lathes. There's one right behind it. Because I see the tail stock. Looks like it's sitting on a bed. So he's got two lathes and a nice end mill. Like really, really nice. Next picture here. Let me flip the page. Yeah, there's the idea. I never, you know, here I'm promoting using leather on the end mill instead of the rubber thing that there is and here this guy's got leather here so um, I'm going to be doing this <laughs> and the neat thing too is he's seen he's holding it all in place with magnets which I never thought about like brilliant idea alright so nice four jaw check <laughs> and I guess since he's got a four jaw next picture yeah you have to have a dial indicator real easy to do this is top view of his uh, tool holder and you can see the the tool, uh, the dial indicator mounted, and I like how he mounted it too. Mounted in a custom holder that he made, so he can just pop this thing in there. It's at height, and now he can dial indicate whatever he's trying to center up in the four jaw. Makes it really clean. I think I might change my ideas and someday make a holder like that that holds the indicator like that. So next picture. This was cool. This one blew me away. Uh, I had emailed him and asked, where did you get the handle? Because I'm dying for one. I hate that stupid handle that, came, that comes with these types of um, vices. And he said he got it from the little machine shop. And I'm going, hmm, okay. Another thing was, yeah, I'm looking at this thing, whatever he's got clamped in the vise, going, what is that he's making? I don't know. But note the very center here of this handle how it's mounted, you know, the octangular nut piece that's in there. So he bought it, and I guess the size of the nuts or the openings didn't fit the vise. So he hand-filed a bolt down. Beautiful job, too, looking at it. Like, wow, that must have taken a lot, a lot of time to drill that out and then file that that nice. But he's got a nut on the nut, <laughs> so the handle fit it. And I'm looking at this going, wow, I've always wanted one of these things. And, you know, here this guy's got it made. So let me pull the camera out for a second. All right, here we go, guys. I had, I don't know what I was making, but this was a raw piece. It was turning, it was like a pulley where just the groove wasn't put in here. And I pulled it out of the drawer, and I said, you know, I wonder if it, it's small enough that I can fire it and make the nut. And I pushed it on there, and it fit perfectly. And I'm thinking, why do you have to do that? Just put a set screw back here. So I drilled it out, put a set screw in there. Put, I had to put the uh, three-jaw chuck back in the vise in the middle, up oh, or lathe, to hold it, and I cleaned it all up, did edges made a little piece, press it in with the arbor, made these guys, and it's just, it's beautiful. 
You don't need to go through all the trouble of making the nut. I mean, you can go fast with this thing. This is great. So I finally have one. I love it. So here's an idea for you guys. Um, that's why I like seeing pictures of other people's shops, because you'll see a picture or something in the shop, and all of a sudden a light bulb will go on in your head, and pull if you got something new, you know, something cool. Thanks, Todd. I've got one because of you. All right, get back to the pictures here. And what's the next picture? Uh, oh, yeah. He, he did the same thing. He saw this from Tom Lipton, and I did too. And I got tired of the chips down in there. So I had put a piece of wood there. And what I did was there was a strip of wood underneath that I glued to the bottom to um, keep it centered and straight. And I'm looking at this going, no way, this guy made his own tea nuts underneath there to hold it in position. <coughs> what a brilliant idea. And in his email response, he says, no, that's just screwed into the wood that you glued on. He screwed into the wood. So anybody ever see a tea nut with a 440 hole in it? So this is my second one for the other side. I've already put this one in place. And just countersunk a hole and boop, and beautiful. It doesn't move now. Because it was a pain before, you know, I go to vacuum up all the chips and I'm lifting the wood up and like, oh man, the chips are falling all over. So, another brilliant idea from Todd, you know. It wasn't his idea, but again, he sparked the idea. So cool. I like the vice too. But hey, get rid of this sticker. <laughs> What's he got? More leather stuff? I'm going to do this too. Looks like he bolt. Yeah, somehow he's bolted everything up there, but... I like that magnet idea. I gotta go and find some heavy duty magnets that will just hold it all in place. Because this stuff is really light, no heavy at all. So great. Wow, look at all the stuff he's got in the background here. There's that nasty cutter again. <laughs> oh, he's got his spindle stop hanging over there. You can do what I did. You can scotch bright it. Looks real nice. Make your own handle. Uh, and I think he's got a ring light up here. The way that's lighting up, cool. I love that. It makes it look like a spaceship or something. Yeah. And this, I can't believe. You know, I cheaped out. I just went on Amazon and I bought that hoot box. Where are they? You can buy the empty boxes for all your drill bits and taps. And they're not that expensive. I think $8, $15 or something. And it's all nice and clean and organized. But this guy, incredible. Spent the time to machine it out. And I know he's drilled the hole with each of the bits that goes in there and stamp them to boot. Beautiful stamping. That's, that is hard to hold that. So my hat's off to you for doing that. All right, is there a last picture? Yeah, last picture. Oh yeah, finger clamps. Nice idea. I like it. So that probably works out a lot in a shop, but sticking them in the middle or whatever. All right, is there anything else I have to cover? I did all the sandpaper, saw jaws, middle noise, the ER32s. Okay, yeah. I guess that's it. Oh, yeah, that's what I used this guy on to make that wheel for the uh, high speed, you know, to, to open and close the vise. No sooner than I made this, I needed to indicate, you know, where, where 120 degrees three times for where the handles were going to go. And I didn't want to put the spindex back in the mill, you know, all the time to mount it and then put the, the wheel in there. So, yeah, I'd have to put the chuck back on the uh, spindex to get the wheel in there to do it. So I put the spindex right here. And I put, where is that? I got, right, oops, wrong door. I got the little scriber guy here. <laughs> I put the spindex right here. Just temporarily put the chucks on it, slid it on it, it stayed put. Put the part in there held this so it wouldn't move and then rotated it and made a scratch and then after I took it out of the chuck black marker put a dot on the scratches now just put it in the vise and drill it and tap it out and poof done so I love this no sooner than I made it I needed it and it worked and I got a job done because of it alright guys well I hope you enjoyed um, like I said before if there's anything specific you want to see me do machine or explain or something just leave it in the comments or email me directly my email address is 
on their website, themanymachineshop.com. Okay, see you later.